Hello, welcome to the Praying Christian Woman podcast. I am Alana and I am so excited to introduce you all to my guest from Simplified Piano. Welcome, how are you? Doing good. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to just kind of introduce you and how I found you and your YouTube channel and how it all went. So I am chatting with Bethany McBride. She runs the Simplified Piano site, membership, YouTube channel. I came across you on YouTube because I have been leading the singing at my church for a couple of years now. And we have an amazing, like, brilliant pianist. And one day I want to introduce you to him because, like, I want him to play on your YouTube channel or something. Mm -hmm. Like, best pianist I've I've known personally ever. Mm. And so I love being able to sing with him. And every so often he is gone and we will either find accompaniment tracks and kind of do, like, church karaoke or what he started doing is he would pre-record music that we could play and I would lead singing. So I wanted a very specific closing song for one set, and I didn't have an MP3 for it. So I told myself, well, we could just do it a cappella. It's really simple. If I remember, it, it was a simple chorus, like, I think it might have been I have decided to follow Jesus. It was just like, we could do this a cappella. It's not ideal, but it's also not the end of the world. Then I started to think, you know what? This is so simple. I wonder if I could just like find a basic piano tutorial and maybe plunk around with it and so I found simplified piano and basically what you do is you teach like most songs on you've got hundreds of songs most of them have three to five chords would you say mm -hmm. yeah um, yep. and it's just it was so basic and so simple so I was able to do our closing chorus <laughs> on the piano I felt really proud of myself and so mm -hmm. then I started getting into more of your channel and more of your resources I'm like oh I just want to be your friend and let's talk and <laughs> and the easiest way to get to know somebody in the sphere is to say come on to the podcast yes. so I'm super excited <laughs> to have you yeah me too can you give us kind of your story of how you got started because I know I got it in one of the emails that you sent out to your students and I mm -hmm. think it is so applicable I know I was in the exact same boat and I'm going to guess some of our listeners have found themselves in that boat too Oh yeah. So I had traditional lessons all growing up. It was not a good fit for me, you know, kind of the endless scales, learning sharps and flats, learning all the theory, but really not being able to play anything after years and years of lessons and my mom forcing me to practice. And, you know, it was just kind of a mm -hmm. endless, yeah. endless cycle. And so speed forward to when I was newly married, we were visiting a church. It was super small town. Everybody knew everybody. And so we were visiting a particular church and they said, Hey, we don't, we're short a worship leader. Would you come on and sing? We know you sing. I'm like, yeah, sure. Hop on stage. I can sing. You know, I always told the Lord I'll sing in front of a thousand, but don't make me talk, you know, and now okay. <laughs> I kind of do both for a living. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of funny what you say no to. So after the service, the pastor and the worship leader came up to me after the service and said, Hey, our worship leader actually has to move fairly quickly. Can you be our worship leader? And I was like, I don't even know what that means. Like I can mm -hmm. sing, but I don't, I don't play an instrument. And they're like, well, we heard you play piano. And I'm like, well, I took lessons as a kid. Right. Don't know how to play. And the worship leader's like, I'll just show you four chords and you'll be on your way. And literally I went to his house that week. He taught me CFGA minor and showed me kind of how these chord sheets work that we now teach from. And kind of the rest is history. I mean, it was choppy. It was offbeat as so many of our students have those same terms. Like it sounds so monotonous. It's so boring. Yeah, it mm -hmm. kind of is when you first begin anything in life, right? It's kind of like you're in the mud for a long time before there's a little bit of breakthrough, but it was enough to be able to chord. Like you said, like yeah. you were able to get on stage. You were able to just even nerves and all lead your church in a, in a closing hymn or now leading church, um, your mm -hmm. church in worship. And so that's kind of how we started. And then I slowly over a long period of time, learned different skills and techniques and rhythms and fill-ins. And so now, yeah, that's kind of where we're at today. And now we're trying to shorten the journey of the way that our students learn so that they don't have to go through the same long, arduous journey that I did. Yeah, so. That's a perfect way to put it because I sort of assumed that in order to at least be proficient enough to accompany our church on piano and our church does about half and half hymns and contemporary mm. in order to be proficient. I assumed I would need to learn like a dozen songs from the hymnal and, mm. and all of this stuff. And what I really discovered with your systems, like 
you don't need every single bell and whistle to mm -hmm. get started. You know, let's boil it down to the very most basic. It reminds me of advice we got when we were going to be brand new parents. And we had no clue. You know, we had the what to expect book. I read all the mommy magazines at the doctor's office, but it, it doesn't give you any idea of what you need to do to prepare. And we had a friend who basically said, okay, are you going to nurse? And I said, yeah. And she said, okay, so you're going to need some onesies and you're going to need some diapers. And that was it. I'm like, really? Mm. Like, <laughs> I don't need to figure out what kind of front pack we're going to use. I don't need to figure out, mm. you know, and, yeah. and just having someone tell you it is okay to start with the bare minimum mm -hmm. really, really helps. So, so I love that. I mean, I thought that you would be a perfect person to just come on and have a conversation with us about worship. So to put you on the spot, what, what do you define worship as? Because I know that can be hard for some people. Do you have like a pocket definition or, or how would you define it? Mm, that's interesting. I mean, I've been musical all my life. I grew up in a musical family. So that's probably how I naturally thought worship was, is it had to do with playing an instrument and singing, right? Right. I mean, I think a lot of people probably think that. Well, then slowly when I was leading our church in worship and then other worship leaders came on board who were much more talented than I, that I started learning a lot from, mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot about like allowing this to just be a portion of our worship to the Lord, not right. just this is the end all be all on Sunday morning for this hour crammed in session. And this mm -hmm. is the way that we praise him and honor him. It's, you know, become through the valleys and through the mountaintops, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like living it out <laughs> through parenting, living it out through right. illness, loving it out through the hard seasons of life. Nothing yeah. like having to do tutorials every single week for our YouTube channel to sort of hold my feet to the fire a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> when you are going mm -hmm. through valleys of being like, okay, I still have to show up and praise. I still it, have to- It keeps you in there. It does. And even when a lot of times, maybe in those hard valleys, I didn't want to sing praise songs, you know, mm -hmm. so not to be all, yeah. you know, in the hard thing, but I think we could just think that it's just going to be this glorious moment of worship and it should be, but I think it's really who we show up in our Monday through Saturday life too, in how we treat our family, how we treat our kids, how we treat our community, how we show up for one another and, and see worship as just an everyday thing too, just the beauty of mm -hmm. the, God's creation and also helping other people you know, point other people to Jesus through our worship as a worship leader. Right. That's just one facet of it, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, you can worship by leading the music at your church or you can worship by emptying out the trash at your workplace. Right. You know, like there's, there's that's lots right. of ways that it can be. And, and I think that that's really helpful for people who don't consider themselves musical. Mm -hmm. I know there are some people like my husband has kind of just a music block, right? Mm -hmm. He was told at a certain age that he had a bad singing voice and he never got over that. And so for him, like he intellectually recognizes that music can be an important part of a church experience, but it, it barely touches him, you know? And if I tell him, you know, if I use a word like a chord or an octave <laughs> or even like melody, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So but how do you, so as a worship leader, and by worship, let's talk specifically about music for right now, even though, like you mm -hmm. said, there's so many other ways. How do you serve those who don't really connect to God musically? Or or what tips can you give to someone like my husband, who's like, this makes no sense to me, but I know that, I mean, we're commanded to worship. And it, it I mean, for a lot of us, we enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Mm, interesting. Well, when you, when you asked that question, it brought to mind this uh, gentleman in our church who comes faithfully every Sunday. His wife does not come to the same church. They're sort of going to different churches their whole mm -hmm. marriage. They've probably been married 40 years. And I always have noticed he sat, he sits during worship. And I was like, hmm. And I, I never really thought much of it other than I always saw him sitting sort of to the left of me, you know, because mm -hmm. everybody has assigned seating in church, right? Like you always sit in the same spot every church. I don't right, know right. That. <laughs> pretty, but, pretty close, like within 80% regularity, yeah, everyone's in the was, same spot. <laughs> right. So he was always to the left of me. And so anyway, it, it happened to be that we were just chatting one Sunday and he says, boy, I just love sitting in front of you because then I can actually worship. And I was like, what is, what does that mean? And he said, yeah. I just, you know, I'm not a singer. I'm not musical. I don't consider, you know, I can't even hold a tune in the bucket, all the right. things that maybe your husband is saying, right. but he said, 
you, you just, I just love to listen when people are sit, sitting behind, you know, standing behind me and they're worshiping and they're singing their little hearts out. Like it just huh. allows me to worship. And I'm, and I've never yeah. seen him actually voice the words or mouth right. the words. Right. And so I just thought, huh, that's really interesting. You know, because I grew up just, oh, my mom always belted it out. You could always hear her in the mm -hmm. entire congregation. I'm sort of a loud singer too. Like uh -huh. I, everybody can hear me and my kids are always like, why right. are you singing so loud, mom? You know? <laughs> But anyway, I just thought that was really encouraging, like from somebody who can, does not consider themselves musical, how he still is able to enter into worship by just listening to those who maybe have a good singing voice around him. Right, right. I just thought that was such a sweet moment of like just seeing him faithfully come to church every single week. I don't know where him and his you know, wife mm -hmm. stand together mm -hmm. as far as their marriage, but I just thought that was so neat how he just, that's just a portion of how he connects to, to, yeah. to worship that way is through other people. I mean, I think even from a worship leader perspective, you know, like creating an environment where they feel welcomed, where they feel like they can let down the burdens of their day. Like, and you're, I mean, part of it is like the technicality is almost like singing in keys that most of the congregation could play sing in along right. with you, not having right. it way too high or way exactly. too low. And then you mm -hmm. wonder why people in the audience are quiet. Well, a lot of it could just be a simple fine tuning of saying, I'm not actually singing in a key that a majority of people can sing in comfortably. And so even as a worship leader, I've found that to be true of just like, boy, if you want the congregation to sing along, you might have to find a different key that better suits yeah. other people than just yourself as a leader. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There are some kind of tips and tricks that I've been learning. So I'm only about, I'm a year and a half into the singing side and like two months into the piano side, mm. but I, I make notes. I'm like, this is a really good song to open with because everyone mm. knows that everyone's into yeah. it. And then I'll make notes like, don't do this one during communion because it's too long. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes it yeah. is just, you know, it's, it's a little technical, you know, it's yeah. stuff that you got to pay attention just like you know with podcasting yeah we we want to show up we want to give people good information we want to encourage and inspire we also need to make sure that like we hit record and that you know we okay. upload <laughs> and so right. there's some of just that logistical stuff too mm -hmm. that i find really interesting because I'll, I'll give you my short story with with singing i used to love to sing and like considered myself a big old belter and like, you know, really loud in the shower and loved worshiping. And as a newlywed, like I put on, do you remember like the I worship? They had oh, yeah. like DVDs. Mm -hmm. I put them on. Like that was like my my hour of quiet time in cardio and music practice all at once. <laughs> yes. And and it wasn't quiet time because it wasn't quiet. <laughs> and then when I was pregnant with our now 14-year-old, I got swine flu. And I got laryngitis after that for like six mm -hmm. weeks where I couldn't talk at all. And then for the next, basically up until a year and a half ago when I started leading music, I would get really hoarse really, really, really quickly. If I got a cold, half the time I would be without a voice for at least a few days. And so I went over a decade being a mouth singer in church. Wow. And the way that I forced myself to kind of become okay with that was well if i could sing as well as i think i used to be able to sing i would want to be doing that more and god's calling me towards things like writing and parenting and podcasting so god knew that i needed him to take something off my plate mm -hmm. and it's not the thing that i would have necessarily chosen but okay and mm -hmm. so i got pretty okay with it and then all of a sudden our music leader leaves <laughs> and kind of like you, like, well, I guess I could try it. What I appreciate is it has given me a, a reason to like, some, some of it was just my voice needed to get retrained because I had gone mm -hmm. so long without right. singing. And so like going through that painful period, kind of like your beginning piano students where you just, I, I heard a term the other week, it's consciously incompetent so it's like were you the one who said that did you say no. that in one of your trainings okay it no, was I love it. someone else I was learning from but it's like I I'm I am musical so I know that I don't sound as good as I want to sound right. and you just gotta you gotta meddle through that or I used to be able to sing like my my voice used to be a lot stronger I need to be okay with the fact that now it is not but still work through it or right. or things like that mm -hmm. so um yeah i i have come to really find it fascinating and interesting some of these little things because i used to, like when i was 20 i would look at like a worship leader 
And it would almost be like, that must feel like being a rock star, you know, like <laughs> you get everybody hyped up and it's like, mm -hmm. you've got the mic, you've got the power, you know, you get mm -hmm. to choose the songs. It, and it sounded so glamorous and now kind of probably like with you and like being a YouTuber with millions of views, it's like, yeah, that sounds cool, but it's a lot of work too. Oh, and it's man. a lot of just day to day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are, I would love pretty soon to get some advice that you have specifically for worship leaders, because I know that's going to pertain to some, but mm. for your all encompassing advice, what are some of the prayer needs that a church worship leader has that the typical congregation who's never done music ministry probably has never thought about? Hmm. Say that again. <laughs> okay. So if, if I've never done music ministry, I don't really know all of the day ins and day outs of what your job description looks mm. like, or maybe what your struggles might Got be. It. So I might not be able to pray for you as effectively. Yeah. So yeah, people listening who wants kind of the inside scoop, how can I pray even better for a music mm. leader? What, what are some of the first things that come to mind? Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I just had a private student, a lesson this week with her, and she was just sharing all the struggles that they're having on their worship team. And we were trying to troubleshoot some of those things, some of the technicality stuff, some of the emotional things like how to, you know, teamwork and how to communicate on stage, off stage, how to build a friendship with people that you're worshiping with and, and stuff like that. And a lot of it came from such a hard place that she's at right now with their current worship team. And I'll tell you what, like, I do think the devil works overtime on the worship team of the church because really if he can take away praise and worship like he can really affect the church big time because that's like our weapon of praise right i mean that's our weapon is to be able to praise and i'm not saying i do that great you know through t through tough seasons in my own life but i do think it is a lot harder than it looks you know with, like you said you you watch chris tomlin or you watch other music artists and you're like man they just make it look so easy and it's like well, yeah, you forget, like they have probably put in hundreds of thousands of hours and you don't see the not so glamorous side of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I would just especially pray for unity amongst worship leaders, because I think that's a, I think it's just struggle because we, we all have different, you know, especially if you're not this particular lesson, you know, this girl, she was just saying, nobody's really sure who the leader even is. So if, yeah. really, if you don't have good leadership of even saying this week, this person is the leader, that can really mm -hmm. leave everybody to feel like, well, am I the leader because I'm right. playing piano or am I the leader because I sing vocals and mm -hmm. I'm leading this song? And so a lot of it just had to do with some hard conversations that just need to be had gently with their community, you know, with their team and yeah. stuff. So it, that just brought up a lot of good point, like her, her and I just hashing those things out, you know, yeah. but unless you're on the worship team, you don't necessarily see the behind the scenes mm -hmm. stuff. It's just like, if you're a part of you know, the hospitality team of a church or the welcoming committee, I mean, right, whatever, right. You, you don't, you don't see the struggles that are it. behind. Right. So mm. yeah, unity for sure. And just like, I think an underlying confidence amongst worship leaders is what I see and not this confidence, like, oh, we want to be prideful and we want to show off and we want to have all the glitz and the glam, but just engaging people in the audience and not just looking at our sheet music. And part of that is the right. technical side. Like you be, you need to be better at your instrument so that you can be engaging with the people that mm -hmm. you're helping lead into worship. Mm -hmm. But you also need to have a confidence and a poise about you that makes people feel like you're inviting them onto the throne of worship. Yeah. You know? That's so a just really hard that, one. Like, yeah. I mean the balance of, yeah, we don't want to be prideful. So praying against mm -hmm. the, you know, the lie that that's the goal. <laughs> it's not mm -hmm. the goal of worship or leading worship is to be prideful, but yet there's a level of, you know, this confidence in Christ that we can be good at our instrument and do the best that we very can so that we mm -hmm. can not be a distraction, honestly, is part of it too. Just being, yeah. continuing to be better at our things so that we're not in the way of what the Lord wants to do through that worship session, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That was a really hard one for me. Cause it was kind of like, okay, do I look at people? We have a small church. It's, you know, mm -hmm. 30 to 50 people. So it's like, right. do I look at people? Is that mm -hmm. engaging for, for the first year? Basically my go-to was the words are projected for me at the back. So I'm just like staring over everybody's head. It's like, <laughs> it kind of looks like engagement, but I don't have to actually see them. Yes. I know one thing that really helps me I'm, I'm less self-conscious about that as I was at the very beginning. And one of the ways that helped me do it is if I do catch someone's eye, like not necessarily I make eye contact with you, but if mm -hmm. I see you and I notice you, instead of that pulling me out of worship, be like, oh no, what's Bethany think mm -hmm. of my singing today? Mm -hmm. It reminds me to like say a prayer for you. And mm -hmm. I've really come to appreciate this idea of 
music is intercession, which I think is like so far down the list of what a lot of us think. We think of music as praise and we think of music as attributing to God all of his, you know, praiseworthy qualities. But there are times I think where music can be beautifully intercessive. I had an experience. So my music background, I was, I'm primarily a violinist and I was playing with our pianist. We found this really pretty arrangement of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Do you know the piano guys? Mm -hmm. They've got yeah. this really, oh, yeah. really beautiful arrangement for cello mm -hmm. and piano. So we just adapted it for violin and piano. And we were doing it for special music, which happens right after announcements. And a friend of mine gave a prayer request that was really like she was going through a, a very scary, traumatic time. And her family had been going through just lots of intense stuff and and it was one of those like okay i know you've gone through this thing but hearing it in her words and and how it was impacting her as a mom and stuff like it really touched me so while i was playing o come o come emmanuel it really turned into like i went to bless her i went to pray that emmanuel would come and comfort her hmm. through this song and and that's helped me overcome some of the what do you call it like the self-consciousness yeah. you know that comes from it what are your thoughts about, because I've heard, I've heard everything. I'm going to tell you like the entire spectrum that I've heard, and I would love to get your opinion. I've heard everything from, it doesn't matter if you have a lick of talent because God wants to use you all the way to like, we, for a little bit of time, attended a church where they would hire professional musicians to come and lead the music, even if they weren't Christian. And it was, well, we want this to be, we, we want them to be talented and we want this to be professional. So it doesn't matter where they're at in their walk with God. And then of course there's everything in between. Where's your, what's your opinion on just kind of how important is talent versus just somebody who's very, very earnest, but maybe mm. isn't, isn't as talented. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, for example, when I first, I wouldn't have considered myself a worship leader in any way, shape uh -huh. or form. I, you know, yeah, I knew I could sing, but I wouldn't necessarily would have called myself a leader. I would, I've always kind of been in the backdrop. I've always sort of shined there. And I would okay. say I'm still not a performer. My mom's in the performance. Like she's always okay. been front and center. And I'm always kind of like, I like the backup, you know, yeah. but I think the Lord grew, you know, like people saw things in me that I didn't see in myself. And so if I wouldn't have sort of stepped out and said, okay, yeah, sure. Teach me these four chords. I wouldn't right. have grew into the leader that I became, you know, I wouldn't have been mm -hmm. able to rise up other worship leaders underneath me. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, you look at different people in the Bible, they weren't qualified. They weren't necessarily equipped. I mean, they had a lot of bad qualities in and of themselves. Mm -hmm. They, they weren't mm -hmm. necessarily felt like they were called for the role. Like, look at Mary. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, Jesus picked kind of the least of these. I mean, he kind of like right. walked amongst and just selected people that he, he knew would just be like, yep. Okay. Like I, I have no idea what, I, you know, because it leaves us more in need of him to fill in all yeah. those gaps, you know, but I also do like, like I'm, you know, like you very entrepreneurial minded, creative minded. I love mm -hmm. to think outside the box, but like you put me, if you put me in that kind of perspective where I'm helping people be creative and think outside the box and helping them rise up into things that they're not great at. But if you put somebody else into the same shoes that I have, like they wouldn't, they would be like a fish out of water. Right. Right. So it's kind of like mm -hmm. in our church, sometimes we just fill warm bodies. Like, and maybe there's a need for that just because of numbers. Like you yeah. don't have a whole lot of volunteers. You don't have a lot mm -hmm. of people that are willing to step up and fill these roles. Mm -hmm. But then I do think as a church, we, we got to get people into their genius spot, like their passion spots. Like yeah. don't put somebody as a welcomer to the church. If they are just kind of a Debbie downer, like they're just right. not really an optimistic, you know, but the, the mm -hmm. person I think of is Jane from our church. She is in the perfect role as a front door yeah. reader. Like she is yeah. bubbly, like, and she just shines, you know? So I think if we continue to allow people to pull things out of us that we don't necessarily see in ourselves, or we mm -hmm. don't have the confidence to see in ourselves, it can help them rise into those positions where they yeah. know that they're passionate and maybe mm -hmm. they had this, you know, like skill or training or desire to do these things. So as far as like, okay, does some, does somebody need to sort of have a tune in the bucket? Yes. I do think mm -hmm. like leading worship, you don't want to be a distraction. So I'm right. not really a, probably a proponent of somebody who, not that they can't come to the worship leading, you know, sessions and jam out and continue to get better right. and learn these right. skills. 
And I think part of that is like people taking people underneath their wings for a season so that, so that they can, and you know, even that's, you've probably maybe seen our live praise and worship sessions. That's sort of why I created this environment where my husband plays guitar, I play piano and sing along so that those people that are maybe know they're going to be called into worship leading at their church, but Mm -hmm. they are terrified or they don't feel qualified or they don't feel like they have the certain skills. Hopefully Mm -hmm. they can come alongside us and kind of get the band like atmosphere, the practice and the interaction of that before they're sort of forced on stage to be, you know, feeling like they're still a fish out of the water, you know? Yeah. So I think there could be baby steps towards those, towards those levels, but Mm -hmm. does everybody have to be perfect before we start? No, (laughs) right. That's the case either. So anyway, that's my little spin on that. I think. Yeah, no, I love that. And I love your just kind of reminder of helping bring up new leaders and, Mm -hmm. and more people who want to do this because if somebody else was like, yeah, I can play piano on weeks when Brian's gone, I wouldn't have even like thought to search YouTube for you. And I I definitely Mm -hmm. wouldn't have bothered trying. And so You know, I I think about this all the time, like I'm surprised at the degree to which I enjoy leading music when I agreed to it. It -hmm. was kind of a, okay, God, I guess, like, isn't this funny that in, you know, my young adult life, it's like, I would love to be up there singing and (laughs) I've got the best voice in the world and the church would be so lucky to have me. And now I'm like, yeah, I can barely sing anymore, but I guess I can do it, Mm -hmm. you know? So in a way, you know, I've got to kind of laugh at at God's timing or chuckle at it at least. Mm -hmm. But I also kind of recognize if we were at a bigger church, I wouldn't have done any of this. And, Mm -hmm. and so that's, I don't know, it's, it's, interesting I guess it's it's part humbling it's part just that's curious you know Mm. because I am really enjoying it but it's not a gift I would have seen in myself and called out in myself and if someone came to me and was like hey we want to teach you piano I'd have been like no I tried that you know a long time ago it's just not my thing I could never get like my left hand to do what my right hand wanted to do and and so, but I think, you know, going back to kind of what you do and your your gift of calling people up is you, you can make it simple, which probably for you really is basically second nature by now. And it's like, yeah, it's just this chord and that chord. And I know how to teach, you know, I know how to teach you how to put these three notes together. Mm-hmm. But when somebody's built it up in their head as this thing that's going to be so daunting and so scary, they kind of need someone to hold their hand and take that baby step. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I I would love to also just pick your brain. So let's switch gears and let's pretend that I have invited you onto a podcast for worship leaders because I want your <laughs> advice on just different things and mm. and your your experience. So for example, I know like my my predominant work role is an author and some authors are really good on the discipline side some authors are great at the passion side some authors i'm kind of where they both have to sort of align and work together synergistically you got to be up at sunday at you know 10 a.m you got to be on that stage you got to be worshiping whether you feel it or not How do you deal with it when, like, it's just been a crummy Sunday? I know you've got a big family. I'm sure not every morning goes very smoothly. How do you handle the days when you just aren't feeling it, but you know you've got to show up? Hmm. Well, actually, currently I'm not on our worship team as a leader, but I led for, you know, probably five, six, eight years. I'm not really even sure Mm -hmm. (laughs) going back and counting it. But I, I can tell you, I mean, I've talked to other worship not necessarily leaders, but people on our worship team with this same thing. Like, it's kind of like, man, can you imagine being a pastor? And then, you know, you had a guff with your wife about the same thing that you happen to be up on stage preaching about, like, the right? wife's probably like, yeah, you should see Awkward. him at home. <laughs> Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the same thing with like, I mean, all those things play into it. And I, I do know for a matter of a fact, so you come back to what, how can they pray for worship leaders? Yeah, it's like the enemy worked overtime every week leading up to when I was going to lead worship. It felt like mm-hmm. all the lies I would just begin to believe. Like, who are you to say that you're going to be a worship leader up on stage? You can't even treat your husband right. Or you can't even, you know, you, mm-hmm. how did you, you know, how did that friendship conversation go that you had this last week and you were blah, blah, blah. I yeah. mean, whatever yeah. we are struggling with in our current life, it transfers through the week and trying to anticipate, you know, to get up on there and stage and still realize, okay, we are human, we are sinners, but yet 
yeah, the pressure was real and it's still, I think it's probably like I'm in the season of that right now, just because, you know, we have five kids, but we have two really young little babies under 20 months. And so my kids even asked me this last week, why aren't you on worship team anymore? And I was like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I do kind of sometimes think there's seasons of things, seasons for things, oh, for too, sure. you know, like I almost got a little burnt out. I hate to say that, but yeah. meeting every single week for that many years in a row, it just, it, it puts on a pressure, you know, it, it's like everybody should kind of take a hiatus from whatever role I think that maybe we're doing. Not that I think maybe we're in a generation that doesn't want to be committed to things, but yet I do think kind of longer that like my, my parents' generation and before they were like, you know, Sunday school teacher for 40 years, never missed a exactly. Sunday, you right. know, and then our generation, yeah, we're probably scared of even committing to something four weeks in a row, you know? So I right. do think there's this huge pendulum swing that mm -hmm. has, has happened between generation yeah. to generation, the level mm -hmm. of commitment and stuff. But some of that is, I do think it's, there, there are times that God calls you to certain things for a certain season. And now it's like, my passion has always been teaching. It's never been in performance. Not that it's necessarily performance being a worship leader all the time, but I am just right where I know I have to be and know I love to be is leading other people to worship. I'm sort of the behind yeah. the scenes at, at, we have this map that has all these little button pins all over it. Yeah. We talked about it mm -hmm. pins on our map and it just shows it, it was kind of a geography homeschool study for our kids oh, to see, like where are all of our students from. And I just think it's fascinating when we look at all those little pins in our living room wall to just see how the Lord is sort of like moving through simplified piano, raising up worship leaders mm -hmm. all over the globe and for his glory, not our own, you know, but that's kind of the, I would say the leader, the worship leader that God has yeah. called me to do is to help people believe in themselves when they don't have that belief in themselves and giving them like sort of stripping away everything that's making it complex to think that they can lead worship or just do it for their own worship at home. You know, mm -hmm. most of our students probably don't have the goals of currently leading worship, but mm -hmm. I just love that maybe that's just where God's called me and, you know, my husband mm -hmm. too, since he, we do this full time together yeah. uh, from home. And so, yeah, it, it looks a lot differently. It mm -hmm. is, it's sort of funny how things come full circle. Like you said, like right. 10 years ago, I could have <laughs> you know, done this a little <laughs> bit better than I am now. Now I'm a little scratchy yeah. and gravelly. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Uh, and same thing, like, you know, how, how he's brought our journey. It kind of came out of uh, a lot of pain. And, and honestly, the last four years that we've been doing simplified piano has been a lot of deep valleys for me, health wise and mental, yeah. just working through emotional, mental, spiritual journey of a lot of hard things, but there's nothing, like I said, nothing like having to do how great is our God for the next YouTube tutorial for our students right? and trying to believe in what I'm, you know, teaching. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, I get that. Every so often I will go back and re-listen to a course I made for authors on like burnout and productivity. Cause mm. like, okay, I need this information again. <laughs> yes. So have you ever, do you have any story that pops to the forefront of your head about how God used like your music or your channel to minister to you specifically, like at just the right time? Hmm. Well, I mean, I think it's just like the, the monthly, the weekly, like the show up when I didn't want to yeah. show up. Like, I mean, right. and most of our business has sort of been behind the scenes where we can pre-record, we can pre-edit. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it hasn't been live. And now the last, right. you know, several months we've been starting to do more live components, but even actually in that whole four years of really tough seasons of miscarriage and surgeries and really you know, NICU time with the baby and all these different things, I still had to show up and do these live praise and worship sessions with our students. And most of them, like, I don't necessarily pick these songs necessarily like, oh, I think this one ties to this one and this one. Ties. I just kind of like right. say, okay, I want to do these next four songs and I think they'll be good. Well, then I'd be leading that, you know, for our, for our community that, and, and I would just be in tears, you know? Yeah. And, and I had a student reach out this week and he said, I was just listening to your September one from two years ago, man, I can't believe what you went through two years ago. Like I just needed yeah. that live, you know, praise. Wow. And he's going through really tough things with his marriage right now. And, mm -hmm. and it was just so neat how like him just seeing me vulnerable, maybe crying, yeah. for, like him, I was just so taken back by the songs that I sort of randomly picked, even though right. they were random, you know, yeah. but like I could barely utter the words going through them. And so mm -hmm. a lot of it just, I was just sort of crying through tears and, and yeah. worshiping and knowing that on the other side of the zoom, you know, where all of our students are, are joining us from in the comfort of their own home, worshiping along with us, mm -hmm. you just know that the, that the Lord is touching them in different seasons and some might be on the Valley and some might be on the mountaintop, you know, I mean, right. we're all 
But yeah, the Lord has definitely used our students to minister to us more than I ever thought. You know, a lot of people are like, yeah. oh, you, you know, like you've helped me so much. You've helped me so much. I'm like, oh, but you, right. you've been my prayer warrior when I can't do mm-hmm. it myself, you know. Right. I even have a private lesson student right now, and she's just a dear friend that we've become she's Mm -hmm. you know my mom's age or more and she just hey can I pray for you and she prays after every single lesson with us and then now I've been praying back with her and so just the sweet friendships that God has brought through Mm -hmm. uh not just you know making money not just this is our way of you know income for our family but it's like oh man it's been so sustaining you know um Mm -hmm. when it's just been such a just such a long go (laughs) for me personally no, I think that's a beautiful picture of what can happen when like your calling and your gifting and your creativity and your business savvy, like when all of those really, really line up and then you add on top of that God's blessing, mm. it really is this just beautiful, magical in the most respectfully Christian way of using the word thing mm. that can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize you were a NICU mom. My biggest kind of music memory and worship came from our time in the NICU of our son. He's now 17 and doing great. Mm -hmm. But we were there for about two months and he was on a feeding tube and all kinds of stuff. And what I would do is this was pre-smartphones. And so basically, I would be in there holding him and have either I would be like chatting with the nurse Mm -hmm. or just sitting with my baby for hours a day. And so I made kind of a mental challenge to be like, okay, every day I want to sing five worship songs to God while I'm holding my kid. And by like week four, I was so just mentally exhausted and spiritually exhausted. And I was still living under this mentality that since I was a Christian, like I had to always like put my best face on and Mm -hmm. because otherwise I was going to be a bad witness to the Lord and I was just so exhausted and at that point I wasn't super into hymns you know like I knew because I grew up in churches but you know I had been in contemporary churches for forever by then or for at least my adult life and Additionally, like that, I listened to the contemporary stuff and just, there was no song that was going to fit. I was just, I was done with all of the, you know, like, blessed be your names. I think it's a beautiful song, but it was not for me at that moment. Mm -hmm. And so I started just kind of humming it is well with my soul. And I remember like somehow through that, just God ministered so much to me in that moment and and I also think there's something beautiful I'm not about to open up the can of worms that can pop open when people like are hymns better or choruses or (laughs) you know like I think there's a place for all of it and it can all worship God but one thing that I definitely appreciate about hymns that have stood the test of time is there is kind of a legacy that gets passed down you know Mm -hmm. my grandma sang this song and her grandma probably sang that song Mm -hmm. and there is something very beautiful and very special about that I think about that around Christmas time when we're singing you know songs like Silent Night we like Mm -hmm. how many people in how many languages for Mm -hmm. how many decades or centuries have sung this song and and we get to be part of that too Mm -hmm. so I I do think that's special Mm -hmm. yeah and it's so universal like you mentioned different languages I am always so fascinated seeing people of different color, nation, tribe, and mm-hmm. tongue, like on our Zoom calls. And I just, yeah. uh, I'm always like, where are you from? That's just so fascinating that you're like, mm-hmm. there's other Christians, believers who are leading churches yeah. in their worship and who are leading worship in their churches. And yeah. like, you, you know, like that we're, we're, we're part of that journey, you know, not, mm-hmm. not from a prideful standpoint, but just like, like, wow, God, like, you know, and yeah. the kids are always so amazed too, when they, when they see the different pins and they're like, what, mm-hmm. this is a country. I'm like, yeah. Can you imagine how many people actually live here that don't know right. Jesus? And it, yeah. It, yeah, that's so, it's so neat to see music mm-hmm. being kind of like passed down through generation and, right. um, and na- different languages too. How many times mm-hmm. people, like you said, like how many people sing this same song in multiple languages? That's right. fascinating. Yeah. And it can break down so many barriers. You know, you've mm-hmm. got the the silent night story back in world war one, and mm-hmm. there's a really pretty version of how great is our God, but it's all in different languages. So like they go mm-hmm. through the chorus and, and through the chorus, you hear probably like a dozen different languages represented. Things mm-hmm. like that are just really, really special. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a cool reminder, like 
the Bible doesn't say that when we get to heaven, we're all going to be speaking a heavenly language. It says there's people from every tribe and tongue, mm -hmm. you know, and there's something even, I mean, it would be cool, you know, to be able to understand everybody. And, you know, maybe there will be some kind of like universal translator mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yes. But it's also really cool because I see that as we maintain our individuality, we maintain our cultural identity, and we're able to use that for God. Like I, even if you think about just all of the different subcultures that exist in the States, mm -hmm. right. And, and how you can find pockets of worship. Like, I don't, I'm going to guess this is a uh, predominant around where you live. Could you find a cowboy church? Like where oh, yeah. you live? It's yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I, I had never kind of heard church. of that before. I'm like a cowboy <laughs> church. Like, yeah. What do you do? Do you like sit on saddles and set a piece? But but so much of it is it is the worship style, you know, and it's mm -hmm. it's other stuff too. Yeah. But you know, I love that we can A, I love that we can worship with people from so many diverse backgrounds, but I also mm -hmm. love how like when you find the music that speaks so much to your heart and so much mm -hmm. to your soul, that's kind of special too. I was mm -hmm. I was joking. What what year, if you don't mind me asking, what year did you graduate high school? Because I'm guessing we're about the same age. When yeah. was it? Oh four. Mm -hmm. Oh four. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was two thousand. Okay. I'm looking at all of the songs that you picked for your channel. I'm like, <laughs> that was a girl who was in the church in the nineties. <laughs> yes, very true. Very true. Well, it's sort of come like, yeah, these are the church songs that I sang growing up. With. Like my and and my mom was the worship leader, you know, majority yeah. of the time. But it's uh -huh. also become out of necessity for who our market has become, which is 60 mm -hmm. to 80 to 90 year olds. Like, yeah. the, and they have all these song requests. Do you know this one? And, you know, mm -hmm. it is well with my soul. Or, you know, some of these right. uh, old ones that, you know, I grew up with churching. Yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's quite fun. <laughs> it is fun. And it's, you know, like there are certain songs that just take you back so much. And even that can be a blessing, it you is. know, so. Yeah. Yeah, they have so much richness in even the music, like looking, like you talked about, you have a phenomenal pianist in your church who mm -hmm. could probably play every hymn in the hymnal, you know, and mm -hmm. when we strip them away and simplify those hymns, I was telling students this week, it's still like I have left so much beauty, not only mm -hmm. like, yeah, the lyrics are there, but like the richness of the chords that a hymnal you know, mm -hmm. oh, hymnal well played sounds yeah. so rich. And when I strip all these beautiful chords out, yeah, it's left with sort of the bones, which we build mm -hmm. on, you know, but, but yet mm -hmm. they're still able to play C, F, G, A minor and play right. it as well with my soul or he, how mm -hmm. great thou art or amazing mm -hmm. grace, you know, and find joy in worshiping where they would, it would take years and years to learn out of a hymnal, you know, to mm -hmm. be able to play that way. So that, yeah. that learning curve, I just think is fascinating. The difference of the classical versus courting mm -hmm. method of learning mm -hmm. to worship. For sure. Yeah, no. And, and I love your system. I think you are perfectly named. So for people who want to <laughs> look Bethany up, it's Simplified Piano. Um, yeah, hundreds of YouTube videos. How many are you at? Do you have any any guess? Oh, yes. Our YouTube channel is probably at the 400, 450, yeah. I would guess. Yeah, but then, you know, hundreds of hours of content that we've produced over the last four <laughs> years, you know, for yeah. memberships and different pieces of content that, that yeah. it's who knows who, who, who knew four years ago, this is what we'd be doing. Right. Yeah. No, I, I love stories like yours of women and moms who just find their, their niche and find their gift. Mm -hmm. And it just combines so much with their passion and it can have such an impact. So yeah, my, my hope and prayer for you is that you just keep on growing and being mm -hmm. blessed and be a blessing to others. And anybody who's interested, yeah, I would say check out the Simplified Piano. Is YouTube the best place to start or do you have YouTube. somewhere else that you would point somewhere? Right. Yeah. YouTube is definitely the, you know, the place to just get their feet wet and understanding how mm -hmm. our method works just the simplified yeah. way. Yeah. And then I would jump into our website, simplifiedpiano.com forward slash plus, where they can jump into any single course, any ebook, yeah. those kinds of things. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really, really appreciate it. Basically, you got me from not even knowing like what a D chord would be to like two weeks ago, Brian was gone. So I did all six songs for the worship set and mm -hmm. it went fine, you know? Good. And like you said, it's, it's utilitarian for now, mm -hmm. but you know, you get more and more comfortable mm -hmm. and, and it works. What I found, this is something interesting. I found that when I'm playing and singing, cause obviously you can't really play violin and sing at the same time. So that's never an experience that I've had musically. <laughs> But there's, so I was worried that when I play piano and I'm singing, 
that I would be like distracted by myself. Do you know, like, mm, am I paying attention yeah. to my hands or am I paying attention to the words? Mm. And I found it actually like I get deeper into the music when I'm able to be like the one setting the tempo and mm. you know what I mean? Like it's, it was a really interesting, like, Oh, okay. This is kind of fun. Now I, <laughs> now I get it a little more. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I just appreciate all that you have and for letting us kind of just pick your brain and hear a little bit about you and what you do in your, your worship journey. How about let's end with this? Sometimes we like mm-hmm. to do, I should have started with this. We like to do icebreaker type things we call just for fun questions. Oh, yeah. Do you have a favorite hymn and or a favorite contemporary song? If you had to pick one of each, hmm. would you be able to? Oh, well, it's funny you mentioned it is well with my soul. Cause that one is, yeah. I just love the meaning behind that song, but that's mm-hmm. probably one of my favorite hymns. Um, hmm. 10,000 reasons, you know, bless the Lord, oh, my soul seems to be mm-hmm. one that keeps coming up. Every, every private student I have keeps you, I just really want to yeah. learn that one. So it's yeah. sort of just because it's at the front of my mind and it's like right. being constantly asked, but I'm like, oh, maybe the Lord has something for me to learn from more from this song. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That one's on my radar too, because one thing I didn't mention about your channel is you can download the chords, the simplified chords for all of mm-hmm. the songs. And so I've saved a bunch of them and 10,000 reasons is in numerals. And so it's always yeah. the first when yeah. I open up that folder. So <laughs> yes. It's always yes. on the front of my mind too. Yeah. Uh, Well, perfect. Thank you so much for joining us and for letting us pick your brain and, and thank you for your, your lessons and your teaching and your channel. It truly is a blessing. Mm, Thanks so much for having me.